All right, y'all, so this will be 8.1, and this deals with polynomial functions and models. All right, so what I'm going to do before I get into actually doing this section, I'm going to show you some graphs, and I want you all to pay attention to the end behavior of the graphs, what's happening at both ends of our graphs, okay? So I'm going to share my calculator. So, y'all, I'm just going to plot different graphs on here, and I just want you all to sort of pay attention to the ends of them, okay? Now, we know what a parabola looks like. The x squared graphs, we know those made a parabola. And if it was negative in front of it, it flipped it over and made it an upside down parabola. So let me show you a graph here of um, an even exponent. Watch what happens to these graphs. So I'm going to do x to the fourth plus 3x squared. Whoops, x cubed. So that'll be 3x cubed minus 2x plus 4. Now, if you remember, the x squared graphs, 2 was an even number. So both ends either went up or both ends went down. Look at this one. I got an x4 as my highest exponent. So y'all, when I hit graph, Look at it. Both ends of this graph still go towards infinity. They both go up. Now, I'm going to go to the y equals, and in front of that x squared, I'm going to put like a negative 2 there. So I now got a negative 2x to the fourth. So watch what happens to the graph when I put that negative in front. So y'all want to hit graph. So just like on the x squared graphs, if it's negative in front, it makes both ends go down. So what I want y'all to realize on this, even exponents will either both ends go up or both ends go down. So now let's play with some cubes. Now you remember the cube graphs sort of went uphill left to right, and if it was negative, they went downhill left to right. So I'm going to play with some of these with the odd exponents. So y'all, I'm going to do 3x to the fifth minus 2x to the fourth These polynomials can get long. Uh, minus 3x cubed plus 2x squared minus 1. Now remember, the x cubed graphs either went left to right uphill or downhill. So y'all, this one's positive. Watch what it's going to do. It still goes uphill to left to the right. And if you was to make it negative in front, made that a negative 3 instead of a positive 3, this graph would go downhill left to right. Now, we're going to make a chart that we can use to predict what will these graphs do on the ends. Okay, we're not worried about the inside. That's just going to be a lot of turns. We're focusing on what the end of these graphs are going to look like, okay? So let's make us a chart. All right, y'all, so I call this the leading term chart. And I'll, I'll remind y'all what we call the leading term when I write some of these out, okay? So the leading term chart has two columns and two rows. The columns 
are going to be the degree of the polynomial. So the degree of the polynomial we're worried about are the even or odd. So we're, our two columns will be the even column first. And then if it's odd, we'll have that column. Now, split this into four sections. So the columns are based on the degree of your polynomial. Is the highest exponent even or is the highest exponent odd? Now, we look at the number in front of the variable with the highest exponent. That's what we call the lead coefficient. And when we look at the lead coefficient, y'all, what we're worried about is what sign is that number? Is that number positive or is that number negative? All right, y'all. So we've seen I did the two graphs a while ago when it was an even degree, like an x squared or an x to the fourth or an x to the sixth. If it's an even degree, and the lead coefficient's positive, both ends of that graph are going to head towards positive infinity. Now, if I got an even degree and that lead coefficient's negative, it's going to take this graph and flip it so that both ends head downward towards negative infinity. Now, the reason they leave a little gap in the middle is because depending on how high your exponent is determines all the terms in here. We're not worried about all these terms. We're worried about what the ends of these graphs are doing. So y'all, then we come to what about the odd exponents? Well, remember when I drew that x to the fifth, that graph looked like it was going uphill left to right. All Odd degree polynomials will go uphill left to right if that lead coefficient's positive. What y'all think if that lead coefficient's negative and it's odd? It's going to flip that over. And if it's an odd degree with a negative lead coefficient, that graph is going to look like it's going downhill left to right. So on this example, I'm going to explain all you need to know about this leading term. What is the lead coefficient? What is the degree? And so on, okay? <clears throat> so these first few exercises, they want us to select one of these pictures. So we're going to select one of the following. that describes the end behavior of the given function. Well, I got about three of these I'm about to do with y'all. And then we'll move on to the next. So for my number one, they're giving me f of x equals square root of 2x to the third plus 4x squared minus 4x plus Two. And y'all, let me name these. We're going to call this A, B, C, and D. That way we can figure out which picture it's going to be, okay? So y'all, the leading term is the term with the highest exponent. So we got four terms here. We got the x3 term, x squared term, x term, and the constant term. So the leading term 
is the square root of 2 x to the third because it has the highest exponent. Now, what are we worried about on this? We're worried about our degree first. The degree is equal to the highest exponent. Huh? All right, sorry about that, y'all. Um, so the degree is equal to the highest exponent, which is three for this one. And what I'm worried about on that three is whether it's even or odd. Well, that thing's odd. Now, the lead coefficient, what I'm looking at, that's the number in front of the variable with the highest exponent. So square root of 2 is my lead coefficient. Now, all I'm worried about is that thing positive or negative. Well, y'all, there ain't no negative in front of this. So this thing is positive. Now we look at our chart. I got an odd degree with a positive lead coefficient. So would I go with A, B, C, or D? You're going to go with, um, you said with odd? Uh -huh, I'm odd. Okay, so you're going to do um, positive B. Okay, everybody, y'all good. That's a, definitely a B because B has an odd degree and a positive lead coefficient. So the positive stuff is the top row, negative is the bottom row, and then the evens the first column and odds the second one. So this one will go uphill, left to right. Now, we don't know what's happening on the middle of this unless we start graphing a lot of points, but we do know that it's going to go uphill, left to right, okay? So y'all try this one. P of X is going to equal negative pi X to the sixth. So see, they're just trying to throw some curveballs at you with that square root of two and that pi. All right, then I got plus X to the fifth minus X to the fourth minus a X plus one. Now remember, what we're worried about are our degree and our lead coefficient. So y'all, let me ask y'all this. What is the degree of this polynomial? Six. Six, because that's my biggest exponent. Good job. And all I'm worried about that is that that thing is even. All right, so my chat was coming in. Yeah, good job on that, y'all. I'm going to leave this open on the side so I can keep up with y'all. All right, now, your lead coefficient is a negative pi. But we don't care what pi equals. All we're worried about is that thing is negative. All right, y'all, so y'all got an A, B, C, or D on this one. Even and negative. So it'll be C. It's going to be C on that one. Good job. So we know that both ends are going to go downhill, okay? So that's what they're doing on this. They're just going to play with you. So let me throw you a little curveball on my next one. What if I got F of X equals a negative 4.6 X to the fourth plus X to the sixth plus a 0 0.2 X to the seventh. So we need to know our degree and we need to know about the sign of that lead coefficient. So y'all, the question of the day, what is the degree of that polynomial? All right, Jana, let me see what you got up there. Samantha, y'all are perfect. Seven is the degree. 
Seven is the highest exponent, and that is definitely odd. So what you got to watch out for, sometimes they like to write them out of order, okay? All right, so my lead coefficient. So this technically is the leading term because it has the highest exponent, which means this 0 0.2 is my lead coefficient. And y'all, that is a big plus sign in front of it. So we know that that is positive. So you're on and positive, you're going with A, B, C, or D. Oh, that was quick, B on there, okay, let's see. Yeah, that's B, right? Odd, positive, so it's going to go uphill, left to right. You know, the first four or so, that's what you're going to be doing on those. Not too bad. Just make sure you find the term that does have the highest exponent, okay? Um, so V the degree is the highest exponent. So like here I had three, two, one. So three was my highest exponent there. On the second one, I had a six, five, four. So six was the highest one there. And then on this one, it was out of order. I had a four, a six, and a seven. So seven became my degree on that one. So it's the biggest exponent you can find, okay? Um, so the odd and even on that, y'all, I was looking at the, the highest exponent, so I'm looking at the number in front of it. So this was a positive square root of 2, so that made that one positive. Uh, the second one, since the 6 was the highest exponent, I was looking at the number in front of it, and that was a negative pi, so that one made that one negative. And then on that last one, in front of the x to the seventh, you had that 0 0.2, and that one was positive. So I'm just looking at the numbers in front of the variables to see whether they are um, positive and negative for that part. Now, the odd and even, I'm just looking at the numbers. Like this degree was 3, which is an odd number. Um, on 2, the degree was 6, so that one was an even number. And then on the third one, 7 was an odd number. So whatever the degree is will give you the odd or, odd or even, okay? All right, y'all, so let's get into the... So the next thing they start doing in this section, um, and this is just so that you'll know how to check and see if your zeros that you find are correct. And we use it by substitution. So this example wants me to use substitution to determine whether 2 is a 0 of the following. So y'all, the polynomial they're giving me is f of x equals x to the third minus 11x squared plus 16x plus 4. So here's the thing. They want me to check and see if 2 is a 0 of this polynomial. So here's the thing about this one. If 2 is a 0, Then when I substitute 2 into the function, and y'all, here's the thing. If that's a 0, <laughs> when you plug that 2 into this function here and you evaluate it, it better equal 0. Because that's what it means to be a zero. When I plug it into my function, it equals zero. So when two is substituted into function, 
the result must be zero. So we're going to find f of 2, and we're going to put a 2 in for them x's. We're going to evaluate it, and we're going to see if we get a 0. If I get a 0 for that, I'll put yes. Any other answer, we're going to put no. So y'all, let's find f of 2. So that's going to equal 2 to the third power minus 11 times 2 squared. plus 16 times 2, and then at the end is a plus 4. Now mine, I'm going to do mine order of operations. So the first thing I got to do is these two exponents. So 2 to the third would be 2 times 2 times 2, which would give us an 8, minus this 11 times whatever I get from 2 squared. Well, that's 2 times 2, which is 4. And that's all the exponents, so I'm just bringing everything else down. So exponents are out of the way. Next, I'm going to multiply. So I got to multiply the 11 and 4 here, and then the 16 and 2. So I'm going to bring the first 8 down. So let's see, 11 times 4, so that'll be minus a 44 plus 16 times 2 is 32, and then at the end is my plus 4. All right, so now we're just going to add and subtract. All right, y'all, so let's see. We're hoping to get a 0 to put a yes. Anything else, I'm going to put no, okay? Um, so let's see. 8 minus 44, that's what, a negative 36. A negative 36 plus 32 is a negative 4. Oh, and y'all look at that. Negative 4 plus 4 gives me a big 0. So since when I plug 2 into that, I got a 0 for my answer, you would put, yes, it is definitely a 0. Now, we're going to start focusing on how to find zeros instead of them giving it to us. And this is how you would check your answer to see if you did have the right zero. Plug that number in to your function and you gotta get a zero, okay? All right, y'all, look at this, terminology time. So since we're getting into zeros, we gotta learn about multiplicity. And the multiplicity is the number of times that a zero occurs. And um, the thing that tells me about this multiplicity is going to be these exponents again. So if you got single variable factors, Or how about single variable terms? So the single variable terms will be like 3x, 5x squared. It's just one term and it don't have any adding or subtracting on it. So if I got single variable terms, the multiplicity equals the exponent. And you'll learn something else about these single variable terms in a little bit. They always have the same zeros. All right, y'all. So binomial terms. Binomial terms are going to be inside parentheses. And it'll be stuff like x plus 5, x squared minus 7. It's two terms that are being either added or subtracted. So if you got binomial terms, the multiplicity equals the exponent outside the parentheses.
Okay, so if the binomial terms are always being per, uh, parentheses when they're factored, um, the single variable terms will just be there without parentheses, okay? But y'all, the moral of the story, I'm looking at exponents still, okay? So this is fun because this is where we start finding zeros, okay? So let's look at these next few examples. They want us to find the zeros of the polynomial function and state the multiplicity of each. All right, so this will be number six where these ones start. So y'all, they're giving us f of x equals parentheses x squared minus four to the fifth power. So here's the thing. This exponent five, that means you technically got five of these x squared minus fours being multiplied together. Okay, just like when we was doing that cube stuff and that square stuff on those uh, difference quotients, that five means there's five sets of these parentheses being multiplied. But y'all, we're not worried about that. What we're worried about is finding the zeros. So define the zeros by setting the factors equal to zero. So y'all, let's write that. Find the zeros by setting each factor equal to zero. Well, this has one factor. It's x squared minus four. So I'm gonna set that x squared minus four equal to zero. We're gonna solve this. Now, I'm gonna tell you the easiest way to solve this when you got an x squared term and just the number the easiest way to solve this is by doing square root stuff. So to do the square root to this, I need the four on the other side. So we're gonna add four to both sides. So I'll get my x squared equals four. And y'all, I'll tell y'all another trick. This highest exponent being a two right here, Anytime you do an x squared, that two means you better get two answers on this, okay? Single x's, you got one answer. x squared, you're gonna get two answers. If we did x cubes, we'd get three answers. All right, so to solve that, to turn that x squared into an x, we're gonna take square roots of both sides. Now, anytime you take the square root of a number, y'all remember that quadratic formula? What was in front of that radical? A plus or a minus? Square root of four. Because remember, square root of four can either be a positive or a negative. All right, y'all, here we go. Square root of x squared. That exponent cancels that radical, leaving an x. This is going to give me a plus or minus. All right, so what's square root of four? Two. Good job. So that means that two is one zero, negative two is the other zero. So y'all, in math lab, you can either write it as plus or minus two, or I, I think this one actually give you the answers and you just pick one of them. So they actually use the plus or minus two. That's my two zeros. But y'all, here's the question. Each has a multiplicity of what? So remember what we say. Remember, that's binomials. We said binomials, the multiplicity equals the exponent outside the parentheses. So that means that plus or minus two, each has a multiplicity of what? 
Hey, what do you got, Samantha? Five, perfect. Because five is the exponent outside. And remember, that five means that you would have five sets of those, okay? All right, y'all, question on that one. All right, so let's do another one. This one will be factored also. F of X is going to equal X to the seventh times X minus two squared times X plus seven. So y'all, before I actually find the zeros, let me ask y'all this. There's not an exponent outside these parentheses on the third term. What would that exponent be? Say that again. You see how this one ain't got an exponent on the outside? Mm -hmm. So what exponent would technically be there if it ain't shown? Oh, y'all, I see my, my one. Okay. It's a one, just like that chat's lighting up. So y'all remember, they're not going to put it there. We don't like to write a lot of ones in math, as you notice. Um, but yeah, that is a one there, okay? So you got to at least have a one for the exponent. All right, so now we know the multiplicities are going to be all these exponents because this is one of those single terms. And on a single variable term, we said it equals the exponent. So, y'all, let's find the first zero. We're going to set all three factors equal to zero. So this X, you're going to set it equal to zero. And guess what? It equals zero. 100% of the time, these single variables like that are going to equal zero for their zero, okay? Now, the other two, you got to actually solve. All right, y'all, so solving these two here, I'm going to add two and be done with this one. So that X will equal two. And the third one, we'll move that over by subtracting. Now, let me show you another trick. These factors that have numbers in them, the zeros are always opposite in sign than the numbers in these parentheses. Factor is negative 2, the zero is positive 2. Factor here is positive 7, the zero is negative 7. They're always opposite in sign, okay? Now, this one's a little trickier on the answer. So y'all watch this. The smallest zero is blank with multiplicity blank. And then next they'll say the middle zero is blank with multiplicity blank. Oh, this multiplicity is a big word. And then last, the largest zero is blank with multiplicity blank. You know, you got three zeros. You got a zero, a two, and a negative seven. Which one's the smallest? All right, Samantha, good job. Negative seven is the... Smallest zero. Now here's the next question. What's its multiplicity? So now you got to find which factor you got it out of. So it is definitely, it looks like you got a one there. Good job. All right, what's the middle zero? Well, you only got two left. All right, I'm going to go with zero on that one. That's the middle number. Good job. And what is its multiplicity?
All right, it's a seven. Good job. And then the largest zero has to be the one we ain't used yet, which is our two. And it has a multiplicity of what? Two. Good job. Hey, right, so I'll let y'all catch up on writing that. Then we'll do one more of these, and then we'll move into having to actually factor them ourselves. All right, y'all, so let me flip over. All right, so I'm going to do one more of those like y'all's number eight would be. So this will be like number eight. It's really similar, but they throw a little curveball in here. So this one is f of x equals a negative 4 times x minus 3 squared. x plus 4 to the 4th. And at the end is x to the 3rd. Now, the reason I call this a curveball, because they put this negative 4 in the front. But guess what? That negative 4 don't have a variable with it. So we will not get a 0 out of that negative 4, okay? There's no way to set negative 4 equal to 0 since it don't have a variable with it. So we're not worried about these single numbers like that negative 4. Our three zeros will come from the x minus 3, the x plus 4, and the x. So I'm going to set each of these factors equal to zero. And remember, that's a single term, so I know what it's automatically going to be, right? Single terms always equal zero. All right, y'all, I don't care what number y'all got in front. Don't worry about it because there's no way to set that number equal to zero that's false statement okay so we're going to solve all three of these by well two of these actually because that is already done so this one i'm going to add my three and i'll get x equals a positive three so once again the zero is opposite and signed in the factor same thing for this one i'm going to subtract four from both sides and I get x is a negative 4, opposite sign than the factor. All right, y'all, we got our zeros. Now, watch how they write this answer. Um, the 0, 3 has multiplicity blank. Blank is a zero of multiplicity four. And then it says the remaining zero is blank. It has multiplicity blank. So y'all, first question, what goes in the first blank? The 0, 3 has multiplicity. Janine, is that this one or was that a pr prior question? Well, if that's this one, you're correct. Because remember, the 0, 3 came from the factor that had x minus 3. And that x minus 3 has an exponent of 2. So that one had a multiplicity of 2. Okay. Um, how about this? Blank is a 0 of multiplicity 4. 
So you got three zeros, three negative, four, and zero. Which one of them three zeros had a multiplicity of four? All right, so negative four on that one. Good job. Which means the remaining zero is zero. And that one had a multiplicity of three. Okay, y'all, so look, these were all factored already. So we just had to set parentheses equal to zero, single factors equal to zero, and then we could find a multiplicity. But y'all, sometimes in life, stuff ain't factored. Okay, so what we're going to learn to do now on these next two examples, these would be like nine and ten. So what they want us to do on this is find the zeros of the function and multiplicities. All right, so let's do nine first. All right, y'all, nine, they're giving me f of x equals x to the third minus 4x squared minus x plus 4. So y'all look at this. They gave me a four-term polynomial and it's not factored. So what we're going to do, we're going to factor this four-term polynomial. So have y'all ever heard of factor by grouping? So what I'm going to do, I'm sort of going to explain factor by grouping as we go through this problem here. So the first thing you're going to do, and this is where it gets this grouping name, we're going to group the first two terms and we're going to group the last two terms. Now, y'all, when I say grouping them, I'm just going to do this. I'm grouping these two together, and then I'm grouping those two together. Those are my two groups, my first two and the second two. So, y'all, the first thing we're going to do to both of these terms, we're going to factor out the GCF, which is the greatest common factor, from each group. Now, on the second GCF, it always has the same sign as the third term. So the third term is negative on this one. That's that negative X. That's the third thing there, first, second, third term. So since the third term is negative, the second GCF is going to be negative, okay? So now we're going to factor out the GCF. So y'all look here. For the first two terms, you got an X to the third, we got a 4x squared. What is the greatest factor they got in common? Well, it can't be a number because there's nothing but a 1 in front of this one. X. Uh-huh. X what, though? How many X's do they got in common? Uh, is it 2? Wait a minute. Am I right? Is it 2? It's 2 because two. this one has 2. This okay. one has 3. So the most that they got in common is two X's. Good job. So what you do, this is your GCF. You write it out front. 
inside the parentheses, you put what this has left over after you divide that x2 out of both of these. So let's see what y'all think here. If you got an x to the third, you divide out two of those x's, what's left? That would be a single x, right? You got three x's. You're taking out two of them when you divide. So that leaves you one x minus, well, the four x squared. What's going to happen when you take out the x squared? All that's going to leave is the four. So y'all with me? They both had two x's in common. So when we factored out the GCF, that left me with an x minus 4. Now, the second GCF, we said had the same sign as that third term. So that second GCF is going to be negative. <coughs> so let me ask you all this. What is the greatest common factor between an x and a 4? And there's pretty much only one thing you're going to put there. I can only think, I think, of one factor they got in common. Jalen, that's it. This got to be a one. So you at least got to factor a one out of that second GCF, okay? So, y'all, what's going to happen to this negative X if you divide out a negative one? You got a negative divided by a negative. So that X is going to turn positive. Then let me ask you this. What's going to happen to that positive 4 when you divide out a negative 1? Well, that positive 4 divided by negative is going to make it a negative. So what do y'all notice about these parentheses? They got to match up. Okay. Now, if your parentheses don't match up at this point, you need to go back and figure out what happened on your GCF stuff. These two parentheses got to match up. So, y'all, now we're going to make two sets of parentheses. So, I'll write two sets of parentheses. Now, Outside terms will make up one parenthesis. So, y'all, let's put that in real quick. The outside terms of this x squared minus 1. So, this x squared minus 1 will go into one of these parentheses. The inside stuff, the um, well, how about this? The terms inside the parentheses go into the second parentheses. Well, y'all, the stuff inside the parentheses is x minus 4, so I'm going to put that in the second one. So now, if you was to FOIL this, this x squared would still multiply by the x minus 4 like we got here, and then this negative 1 would still multiply by the x minus 4 like we got there. This is the shorthand way of writing it, but y'all, guess what? At this point, we are factored. This is now factored. So now this problem becomes one of these problems. Now, y'all, the first question I got to ask y'all is, neither one of these parentheses got exponents out here. So what exponent would y'all put behind each one of them parentheses? All right, Samantha, good job. They both got a 1 there. So we would put a 1 for our multiplicities on those, okay? So now that we're factored, we're going to take both of these and do like we did up here. We're going to start setting stuff equal to zero. So we're going to set x squared minus 1 equal to zero. 
And then we're going to set x minus 4 equal to 0. We now solve these. Now remember, since this one was in polynomial form, the highest exponent being a 3 means that we need three zeros when we're done. So we're going to get two of them here and the other one here. Now, y'all remember a while ago when I had an x squared term in a number, I did the square root stuff. So I'm going to do that on this one. I'm going to start out by adding 1 to both sides so that I get my x squared equals 1. Square root both sides. So square root of x squared. <clears throat> now remember, square root of a number, so we got to use our plus or minus square root of 1. <clears throat> All right, y'all, square root of x squared is x. That's going to equal plus or minus square root of 1 is 1. So that means positive 1 is 1, 0. Negative 1 is a 0. And we got to play with this second equation to get the third one. So here all we got to do, that's a single x. So we just got to add 4. And we get x is a positive 4. So for this one, they'll have the zeros of the function. R, x equals blank, each zero has multiplicity blank. So the question up here, the three zeros, well, that's going to be a positive one, a negative one, and a positive four. Okay, now each of these zeros has a multiplicity of what we say? Uh, I'm seeing a one. I'm seeing ones. Okay, okay. So definitely a one because that's those exponents that we said would be outside them uh, parentheses, okay? All right, so I'm going to do another one of these where we got to do this uh, grouping too, okay, so that y'all get the idea. There's only two, 9 and 10. Um, so I'm definitely doing both of these because um, this grouping, it's a little tricky, okay? I'm going to let y'all catch up real quick. All right, y'all, so let's look at uh, number 10. So this one has f of x equals 6x to the third minus x squared minus 294x plus 49. So four terms again, so I'm doing the grouping again. And y'all, I'll show you a trick on this one. So we're grouping the first two together and we're grouping the last two together. Now I'm gonna factor out a GCF. I got a six X to the third and an X squared. So it looks like again, the most of these two got in common it's going to be x squared, right? Because you got an x squared here, and there's three x's here. So you're going to factor out an x squared on that one. Now we got to see what goes into parentheses. Well, if you had a 6x to the third, you factored out two of those x's. That's going to leave one x. So that'll be a 6x minus. So y'all look at this. You got an x squared. You're factoring out of x squared. So basically, x squared divided by x squared is going to leave a 1. 
Now that I have this one factored, I know what's going to end up going into second parentheses because those parentheses got to match up. So let's figure out the GCF. It's going to be negative like the third term. And y'all, here's a trick on this one. Since we know that this has to have a one at the end, there's only one number I can divide 49 by to make that a one. So on this number 10, your GCF will actually be whatever that last number is. So it'll be a negative 49. Now, if you take a negative 294x, divide by negative 49, that's going to leave you a positive 6x. And then this positive 49 divided by negative 49 makes that a negative 1. So notice, the parentheses match up. Okay. So remember, at this point, I put two sets of parentheses. So here's the question. What would I put into these two parentheses? How about these first ones, y'all? Would it be x squared minus 49? x squared minus 49. Uh-huh, perfect. So that's the outside stuff, and then what's going here? 6x minus 1. Uh-huh. And remember... Both of these don't have numbers out here. So since we're factored at this point, we're going to treat them both like they got an exponent of one sitting out there. Good job, y'all. So now I'm just going to set everything equal to zero and see what we get. So the x squared minus 49, that's going to give me two of them. And then the 6x minus 1 will give me the third zero. All right, so x squared in the number again. I'm going to add the number and do the square root. So let's see. That's what an x squared equals 49. So the x squared is by itself. We're going to square root both sides. And that means on the number, I got to throw out my plus or minus, okay? So to the square root of x squared, those cancel giving me my x equals plus or minus uh what's that square root of 49 seven. is there seven. you go mm -hmm. so two zeros seven and negative seven so y'all let's get that third one right here uh looks like we're just going to add one and then divide so let's add one so the six x will equal to one we're going to divide by six So those cancel giving me 1x. Um, well, we can't do nothing to that, so that's going to stay a 1, 6. So for this one, my zeros are blank. All have a multiplicity blank. All right, so... Um, now, Math Lab will let you use the plus or minus on the 7, or you could do like 7, negative 7. 7, 1, 6. And then the 1, 6. Uh -huh. And then they all had multiplicity, we said of? 1. 1, there you go. So these take a little practice, but once you get used to the patterns, like they got to match up in the parentheses, the second GCF always had the same sign as that third term. Once you get that out of the way, you'll be good to go, okay? All right, y'all. So the last thing we look at for multiplicities. For this section, there's two questions. Um, and, we, and we're looking at the factors and their multiplicities. So here's the thing. Factors with an even multiplicity... are tangent, and I'll show you what that means, they are tangent to the x-axis at that zero. So 
So y'all, um, so I'm gonna draw an x-axis here. So tangent means it comes down, sort of touches the x-axis and goes back up. So tangent, it don't go over the x-axis. It come down, it'll touch it and go back up. Or it can even come up this side and touch the x-axis and then go back down. But notice, it does not cross over it. So if it's got an even multiplicity, tangent means it comes down and touches the x. So what's left are the factors with the odd multiplicity. Well, the ones that are odd multiplicities, they cross right over that x-axis. So factors with an odd multiplicity cross over the x-axis at that zero. So say here's my x-axis. So they're either going to come down and cross over, but it comes all the way across it, okay? The graph crosses over either going down or it could either go up and cross it. But the ones that got the odd exponents as a multiplicity are going to cross right over it. Now, you got to know that because I got two true or false questions coming up. So these are going to be true or false. See what y'all think. If uh, P of X equals X minus 7 to the 8 times X plus 6 to the 7th. So they're giving me my factors and stuff. They're saying then the graph crosses the x-axis at 7, 0. So since this is the x-intercept, 7, 0, remember, 7 is the 0 we're looking at. So you got to figure out which one of these two factors did that 0 of 7 come from. And you're going to look at its exponent. And tell me whether this is true or false. So, y'all, what I'm looking at, I got a 7 here as my x-intercept. So, that had to come from this factor, x minus 7. Yeah. Well, its multiplicity is a 8. 8 is an even number. And right here, we said if it was an even multiplicity, it's not crossing the x-axis. It's actually tangent to the x-axis. So since they said it crosses, this is going to be false. Now, let me ask you this. What if this was a negative 6, 0? If that was a negative 6, 0, it would have came from this factor, the x plus 6 which has an odd multiplicity. So if it was odd, it would actually cross over and would have made it true. But they were looking at this zero with the even, okay? So y'all y'all got to get the last one. This is for y'all. If P of X equals X minus 2 to the ninth times X plus 1 to the fourth, then the graph is tangent to the x-axis at the point negative one, zero. Is that true or false? True. Oh, good job. That was quick. Because negative <laughs> one came from <laughs> negative one came from that factor. And it had an even exponent. And we said even exponents um yeah. up here were tangent. So good job. Yeah. Good job.
All right, so that's what they're doing to you in 8.1. 8.2 won't take us that long, y'all. Um, there's one thing I want to show you, and then the rest of it is getting you good at graphing on your calculators. So um, let's knock out those 8.2. And, and what I got to show you on 8.2 when we get to the graph and is how to set the window on your calculator because to get the graphs they're doing, they want you to be able to set your windows and stuff. So here we go. We'll start out doing different stuff, though. So let me see what my chat's saying. Um, oh, the answer on that last one was true. Okay. All right, y'all. Two is um, eight point two is graphs of polynomial functions. Now, what we're looking at this, we're going to be looking at functions first, and we want to be able to tell. What's the maximum number of real zeros they can have? Because some zeros in the future can be imaginary, we'll learn. So the maximum number of real zeros we're looking at. What's the maximum number of x-intercepts? Well, remember, x-intercepts are the same as zeros. So those two will have the same answer. And then we're going to look at the maximum number of turning points. What's the most that a graph can turn for me. And y'all, it all goes by the degree of the polynomial. And remember, the, glove on. the degree of a polynomial is equal to the highest exponent. Okay, so the highest exponent, they might have them out of order, but the highest exponent gives you your degree. So the maximum number of real zeros is equal to the degree. So if you got a degree seven, that means the maximum number of real zeros is seven. The maximum number of x-intercepts is equal to the degree because, remember, zeros and x-intercepts are basically the same thing. So it would be 7 like the real zeros. The one that's different is the maximum number of turning points. And y'all check this out. The maximum number of turning points is equal to the degree minus 1. So that's what we're going to use for this next example. And y'all will probably have two or three of these. So I'm going to do one of these for you. So for the function. f of x equals 3x to the ninth minus 3x to the fifth plus 4x minus 3. So there's my polynomial. We're going to state max number of real wait, zeros. Wait, wait. Oh, you line up. I want the ball. <laughs> we'll do the max. Oh, I'm getting... See where your purple is? 
We want the max number of x-intercepts and then we'll find our max number of turning points. All right, y'all, what's the maximum number of real zeros? What is the degree of that polynomial? Oh, y'all, I'm not saying nothing light up on that one. Let me see. Okay, um, there goes. There goes nine. Okay. It's nine. Good job. Because remember, the highest exponent is a nine. All right, well, that means how many x-intercepts? Mm -hmm. I can't tell if that, Jalen, was that from the first one or the second one? But that's right, that's a nine. Because remember, these two are the same. Zeros and x-intercepts are always the same. So the maximum number of turning points, what do y'all put in there? Mm -hmm. Eight, good job. Okay, so remember, these two will be the same. That's going to be one less. Once you do that, you're good. All right, y'all, so let me show you what you're going to do on the graphs here. So these examples, so I'll go through one or two of these for you so you see how to set that window. Because that's the main thing they're wanting y'all to learn is how to set your calculator window to match these graphs. Because a lot of times, a 10 by 10 window, going from negative 10 to 10 on the x's and negative 10 to 10 on the y, ain't enough of a range to see the graph. All right, so these will say, choose the correct graph. So this one, um, I'm going to do f of x equals x to the fifth minus x to the fourth plus x squared plus 12. Now, y'all, on that one, let me find that paper. Uh, let's see. On that one, right here, it says all graphs. This is the window they're giving you to use on your calculator. So let me show y'all what that means. So it'll have it up under the graph so that you can make a picture look exactly like one of these three, okay? So they'll have, it had negative five, five, comma, negative 50, 50. And then it said X, this is the X scale. So the X's are going by one. And then it says Y, SCL, that is the Y scale. And they want you to set the Y's going by 10. So every line means 10 on the Y and one on the X's. So what they give you first is the X minimum. And then that'll be the X maximum. The negative 50 is your Y minimum. 50 is your Y maximum. So what I'm going to show y'all how to do is set the calculator up using their numbers. Okay, so we're going to share my TI-84. I'm going to go to Y equals, and I'm going to clear out that. Now I'm going to set my window first, and then I'll come and put my little function in, okay? So y'all to set the window, if you'll notice, I'm going to clear my history over here. The, um, the window button, it says window on it. Hit that button. And then you see X min, X max, X scale, Y min, Y max, Y scale. So this one said negative five. So I'm going to put in negative five, arrow down. My X max was a positive five arrow down. The X scale, they said, goes by one, which I got. So arrow down. 
My Y minimum was a negative 50. Arrow down. My Y maximum was a positive 50. Arrow down. And then they said on the X scale, we're going to go by tens. So that's how you set your window. You use your window button. Now let's go put our function in on the Y equals. So this was X to the fifth. So let's see. X exponent 5 arrow down. Minus X to the fourth. So minus X exponent 4 arrow down. Plus X squared. Arrow down and then plus 12. All right, y'all, let me see what my chat's saying. Uh, oh, I didn't see the question on my chat. Let me see what that question was. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, you're perfect, Jamin. That's right. The maximum number of turning points is the degree minus one. All right, y'all. So remember, I got three graphs. We're going to, whoops. I'll put that up in a second. Let's see what the graph is, and then we'll pick A, B, or C. All right, y'all, so I'm going to hit graph. All right, so you got your picture. So it's going uphill, left to right, sort of. And now, if you look on my sheet, the one that went uphill, left to right, was that B. Okay, so now we're going to do another one of these. Let's see what I had next. All right, so the next one I'm going to do is f of x equals, oh, which one do I want, y'all? All right, I'm going to do this one. x to the fourth minus 2x to the third plus 7x squared plus a x minus 21. Now on this one, the window's doing the same thing, negative 5 to 5, but then it does negative 30, 70. They're saying the x scale is 1, the y scale is 10. Okay, so I know what I'm going to set my window at. Now, y'all check this out. I'm doing this one right here. Well, that's a even exponent. So I know by the end behavior, both ends are going to go up. So it's either going to be A or C. Okay, so let's see what we get on our calculator. So I'm going to go to window first and set that. So I had negative 5, which is in there. Positive 5 is in there. 1 for the X scale. The Y minimum was negative 30. So remember, when they give you the little box with the numbers, the X's are always first and then the Y stuff, okay? Now the Y max we said was 70. And then it's going by tens already, so I'm good on that. So now I'm going to go to y equals, clear that one out, and I'm going to put in my x to the fourth. Arrow right, minus 2x cubed. Arrow down, plus 7x squared. plus x, and then minus 21. Ooh, these polynomials can be long, okay? All right, we got a window set. We got our function in. Now we hit graph. 
And y'all look at that. It's coming down to the second tick mark on the negative side of the X's. So let me pull my graph back, my sheet here. So notice this one is down to the first tick. We need this one right here. It's going down two ticks like our graph. So we come in and pick C on that one, okay? So set those windows to match their windows, okay? So let's do one more of these, and then I think y'all should be good on these. Now, I wanted to show you one that was sort of factored out. This one is a G of X equals a negative X times X minus 3 squared times X plus 2 squared. Now, let me tell you on this one, they don't give you a window to use, so you got to look at the graph. This graph goes negative 100 to 100 on the Y values, and then it goes from negative 10 to 10 on the Xs. So if they don't give you a window, look at their graphs to see what you want to set your window at, okay? So y'all, let me show you. This graph we're about to do is going to look like one of these four pictures. Now, you see how they've got negative 10, 10, and then negative 100, 100. So the 10s are going to go by 1s, and then the 100, negative 100. On the Y, we're going to go by 10 again. So let's go to our calculator and put this in. And um, I'm actually going to put it in just like it looks, okay? So let me set my window. X min on this we said was negative 10. 2A, positive 10. X scale was 1, which is good. Then my Y went from negative 100 to a positive 100. And it was at a 10, which I got. So now let's go put in the function. Clear that one out. So I had a negative x. So the negative, use the negative in the parentheses. So negative x, parentheses, x minus 3. Close parentheses, and that's squared. And then I had parentheses again, x plus 2. Close parentheses, and that one squared. All right, so we got our window set. We got our function in. Now we're going to hit graph. And look, on the left side, it sort of comes down, touches the x-axis, because that was an even exponent, crosses through the center, and then it comes up and almost is tangent again at that 3, because it had an even exponent. So, look how it did. Now, let me put my pictures up. And if you look at that picture and look at my sheet here, I would pick D where it came down and then it sort of crossed over, came up and touched at that three and went down. So that one, I would pick something like D. So, y'all, that's the thing on this section. Um, you'll have two or three questions about the max zeros, max intercepts, max turning points. And then the rest of it is just to get you good at graphing on your calculator, okay? And get used to it. Now, let me show you back on my calculator. Um if you ever want to get it back to a negative 10, 10, and you don't want to go through all the window stuff, to reset it, you hit the zoom button. And number six that says standard, you hit six, and it'll put it back on a 10 by 10 graph for you, okay? Um, that way on future problems, it'll be the normal 10 by 10 like math lab. Um, but this section, like I said, they want to get you good at uh, setting that window. So I'm going to clear that out. And then uh, 
like I said, my graph is back to a 10 by 10, okay? All right, y'all, so that is 8.2. So what we're going to do next, uh, let's see, Thursday, this Thursday coming up, we're going to knock out 8.3, which deals with synthetic division. Um, that's the way I can check if numbers are zeros or not. And then we'll get through 8.4, probably about the first, I say, seven or eight questions. Um, 8.4 has some long, a lot of foiling and stuff. So we'll, 8.3 is not bad. It's pretty quick. And then we're going to start 8.4 for sure. And then that way we'll finish 8.4 next Tuesday and keep going, okay? So Somebody had a question about, um, it was on 8.2 when it came to max number of real zero when you had both of the nines and the eight. Somebody was trying to figure out how did you get the eight? Oh, uh. Uh, Jalen had answered it, but what you do, okay, the maximum zeros is equal to the degree. The maximum x-intercepts equal to the degree. The maximum number of turning points is equal to the degree minus one. So on that problem, we had a degree of nine. So when we subtracted one, we got an eight. So that gave me an eight. Maximum turning points. But yeah, I seen that question, but uh I think it was Jane that had answered it and they they seen where she had answered it. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. So uh like I said, uh eight point three is not bad once y'all learn how to do some synthetic division. Um it's not a bad section. And we will knock that out next class. So I'm going to stop my recording so it'll start sort of downloading for me.